two deaths, a potential underwater murder, and a cave system cursed by local legend. That's just a few of the mysterious circumstances surrounding this peculiar cave diving tragedy. Just off the Croatian coast in the Adriatic Sea lies the picturesque island of Sholta. Its stunning turquoise waters create an illusion of a tropical paradise. With a population of just 1700, the island's secluded coves offer ideal spots for swimming, fishing, and of course diving in the warm, crystal clear sea. Yet amid this tranquility, there is one place that locals steer clear of, and that's the enigmatic Bay of Pogonizia. You may want to avoid the Bay of Pogonizia, but one thing you will definitely want to see is Raid Shadow Legends and their giveaway with real life prizes that you can get for free. Stay until the end to receive an insane bonus that is almost too good to be true. Raid has super high store reviews and over 4 million active monthly users with infinite content awaiting for you and your friends to dive into that is updated monthly to never leave you without something to explore. What I like about Raid is the high amount of characters, it has over 800 including my personal favorite El Hain. Raid is ringing in summer with a crazy summer tavern minigame from June 10th to July 10th. Download Raid using my link below and head to summertavern.plarium.com to win expensive prizes like a gaming console, smartphone, or Amazon gift cards totaling over $5,000. You can also get a two-month YouTube premium subscription by downloading Raid before July 17th, playing for at least five days, and hitting level 20 within 30 days. Raid has endless content that will keep you entertained the entire summer. So use my link in the description below to get a massive head start and immediately get a huge starter pack with an epic champion Tayrell from the High Elves faction. And after reaching level 25, get another huge starter pack containing epic Rector Draft. Don't forget to use my link in the description and make sure to join my clan Vortex YT so we can venture through this world together. Thank you Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Now back to cave diving. On the evening of September 10th, 2002, a group of individuals aboard a tourist boat anchored in the Bay of Pogonizia to do some diving. A few members of the group went for a post-dinner dive around 9 p.m. On the boat, there were a few remaining crew members, including the captain of the ship and a middle-aged cook from the Czech Republic. This cook was named Miroslav Kuklish. Around 15 minutes after the initial divers entered the water, Miroslav chose to join them. Unbeknownst to the rest of the crew, he entered a cave near where their ship was anchored. The entrance started off as a two meter wide funnel shape and it widened into the first corridor. Around 15 meters down, the cave split into two galleries, one shallow and one deep. The galleries of Pogonizia create a complex system of tunnels that wind through chambers, posing a significant risk to any diver. Additionally, the cave's interior, like many caves, was coated with a a fine layer of silt composed of dust and sand. This silt can create a murky fog in the caves that can drastically reduce visibility to almost zero. Even with a powerful flashlight, the scattered light makes it almost impossible for any diver to see beyond a foot in front of them. Upon reaching 50 meters, Miroslav began his ascent, first rising back up to the chamber's roof, then navigating towards the corridor leading out. However, he made a critical mistake. He took a wrong turn. Instead of heading towards the exit tunnel, he veered into the shallow gallery. Divers that are familiar with this cave emphasize that from the deep gallery, the entrance to the shallow one can easily be mistaken for the exit funnel, especially in poor visibility such as in a silted out cave. Compounding this situation, Miroslav had consumed alcohol with his dinner, impairing his judgment as he ventured into an entirely unfamiliar part of the cave. After 25 minutes of diving, Miroslav realized he only had 30 five minutes worth of air left in his tank, so he began his ascent while searching endlessly for the entrance to the cave. This time frame also had to include decompression stops to avoid severe decompression sickness from ascending too quickly. Meanwhile, on the surface, the rest of the diving group returned to the boat around 10.30 p.m. Upon noticing Miroslav's absence, two of the divers went back to the cave to search for him. Despite searching for over an hour, they found no trace of him and made their way back to the boat at 11.40 p.m. Realizing the dire situation, that unless Miroslav had found an air pocket, he would be out of air, the group made an emergency call to the police in Split Croatia at 12 a.m. on Wednesday morning. As the sun began to rise, two of Split's police officers arrived to dive in and search the Pogonitsa Bay Cave. The officers arrived equipped with safety lines to prevent getting lost. They began their dive and swam to the entrance of the cave, progressing into the 
dark tunnel where they encountered narrowing passages until reaching the split between the two galleries at the 15 meter mark. Unfortunately, during the search, one of the rescue divers accidentally let go of the safety line and vanished into the darkness. Left alone, the other diver desperately sought a way out as his air supply depleted. At the brink of his air running out, he managed to locate the exit funnel and escape the deaths. However, unfortunately, the police diver's panic led him to skip decompression stops, which resulted in severe decompression sickness. Tragically, the police diver who got lost searching for Miroslav Kuklish was never found. It's believed he made the same error as Miroslav, mistaking the tunnel to the shallow gallery as the exit and becoming lost in the maze of passages. As the search continued, light filtered into the tunnel, offering the hope of possible air pockets where Miroslav could have possibly sought refuge. Even if Miroslav did manage to find an air pocket and was still alive, he would have endured over 24 hours trapped in total darkness. The police diver, who had become lost, was discovered at a depth of 24 meters in the shallow gallery. Divers then proceeded to explore the deep gallery where tragically Miroslav's body was found at a depth of 54 meters at the bottom of the cave. He was found fully equipped, though his diving mask was not on his head and his regulator was not in his mouth. However, perhaps most shockingly, a knife was discovered lodged in his chest. While his gear was being removed, the knife accidentally dislodged from his chest and his dive computer fell off, but these items were recovered and brought to the surface. With this grim discovery, the rescue operation turned into a crime scene and Miroslav's death was now treated as a possible homicide. As a result, all diving equipment and dive computers that belonged to the party were collected for forensic examination. Additionally, a suspicious reddish stain found on the boat's deck was swabbed and sent for analysis. Blood samples were obtained from the entire crew and multiple knives were seized from the boat. Members of the crew were given polygraph tests and while most passed, two individuals who were on board when Miroslav went diving showed signs of deception, particularly when prompted with the words knife and blood. These individuals were taken into custody, although formal charges were not immediately filed, and the remaining members were released but barred from leaving the country as the investigation unfolded. While awaiting the stain analysis results, all scuba gear underwent thorough analysis. First, the investigation tried to ensure the integrity of all dive equipment, to rule out any tampering or possible sabotage. The dive computers underwent testing in a hyperbaric chamber to simulate depths exceeding those at the bottom of the gallery. Analysis revealed that each computer displayed consistent dive profiles, which indicates they were functioning perfectly. These profiles, made by the computers, detail the dive's start, maximum depth, decompression and ascent times, and the overall duration, which offers a comprehensive overview of the entire dive. Furthermore, the computers had stored data from 37 previous dives, which cannot be altered or deleted, ensuring its reliability. Secondly, an autopsy was conducted on Miroslav's body, which revealed he was in good physical health before his demise. The examination unveiled a deep stab wound on the left side of his chest, measuring 11 centimeters in depth. Traces of water found in his lungs indicate he had aspirated water at the time of his death. This suggests he likely perished within two minutes or less after receiving the stab wound. Additionally, his blood alcohol level was measured to be 0.114, surpassing the legal driving limit of 0.08. Considering this evidence alongside the indication of drowning, it is plausible that Miroslav was either stabbed and immediately disposed of in the water, or he was stabbed while submerged. The police then explored the various scenarios surrounding his demise. The first possibility was premeditated murder. In this scenario, the killer would have had to manipulate Miroslav's dive computer to simulate Miroslav's dive profile. This would have been done by attaching Miroslav's dive computer to something heavy, like a rock, and letting it sink to the bottom of the cave and pulling it up and down. However, the cave structure made it impossible to achieve the recorded depths without snagging on rocks, thus ruling out that possibility. The second possibility was that Miroslav got into a fight on the boat, was stabbed, and then thrown into the water where he drowned a few minutes later. This would account for the signs of both stabbing and drowning occurring around the same time. Analyze 
analyzing the dive computer's data, it showed Miroslav entering the water smoothly and descending directly to the cave's entrance. From there, he went straight to the 50 meter mark before quickly ascending. He then moved erratically between various depths, which indicates that he was very likely searching for the exit. After some time, he rested at 40 meters for five minutes before his descent to the cave bottom where his body was found. For this scenario to hold, the assailant would have to replicate Miroslav's dive profile, which was extremely unlikely. Additionally, there were no signs of injuries from a struggle underwater. The third possibility, and the final one that was looked into, involved Miroslav encountering the initial rescue divers. It was hypothesized that in a panic, Miroslav could have attacked one of them, which led to a defensive stabbing. However, the timeline and dive records of the rescuers did not support this theory. The most plausible scenario pieced together from the evidence is as follows. On September 10th, 2002, Miroslav Kuklish entered the water around 9.15 p.m. He descended smoothly to the cave entrance at 9 meters and then headed into the deep gallery. After reaching 50 meters, he attempted to ascend but mistakenly entered the shallow gallery, most likely due to poor visibility. Panicking as he realized he was lost, Miroslav wandered the shallow tunnels for about 30 minutes before returning to the deep gallery. In a state of despair, Bear, Miroslav rested at the deep gallery's ceiling, possibly contemplating his fate. It appears that in a bid to avoid drowning, he made the tragic and desperate decision to stab himself in the chest. His body was later found at the cave's deepest point, 54 meters down. Factors such as alcohol impairment or possibly even nitrogen narcosis might have influenced his actions, but we'll never know for certain. Initially, Croatian military divers rejected the idea of suicide, but further forensic analysis confirmed it. The stains that were initially thought to be suspicious turned out to be paint, and ultimately Miroslav's death was ruled a suicide. Contributing factors included his inexperience as a diver, the presence of alcohol in his system, and the challenging nature of the cave he was exploring. Don't forget to check out the Raid Shadow Legends Summer Event through the link in the description to support the channel and win amazing prizes. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe so we can keep bringing these stories to you every week. If you have a suggestion, leave a comment down below. Till next time.